On a special Sin City edition of SmackDown Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, we see not one, but three epic championship matches in the return of Vince <clears throat> Mr. McMahon to smack down in God knows how long to have an epic encounter with Kevin Owens. But how does this all affect heading into the Hell in a Cell pay-per-view in just a few weeks? Well, we're going to find out as we cover all this and so much more on this week's edition of the SmackDown Rebound. Hello, everybody. My name is Connor, a.k.a. OK Fabe, your official SmackDown video correspondent for One Wrestling Videos and, of course, OneWrestling.com, as we're here, of course, to cover what happened on the September 12th edition of SmackDown Live and a little thing we like to call the SmackDown Rebound. We thank you guys for tuning back into wherever you guys are watching this, whether it be on OneWrestling.com or, of course, the One Wrestling Video YouTube channel, which I believe, if we haven't done so already, are dangerously close to breaking 20,000 subscribers on that channel. It's all because of you amazing, wonderful people. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and checking things out here. You, of course, got my reviews, Raw Reviews, NXT, Impact Wrestling, Global Force, Bill Afters, Afters Alley, and the After Chat. So much stuff here on One Wrestling Video's YouTube channel. Of course, all the wrestling content on OneWrestling.com, your 24-7 wrestling news source. Of course, we're going to cover everything from SmackDown Live from September the 12th, 2017, the Sin City edition of SmackDown Live. And needless to say, this was a barn burner, and I'm going to use that phrase because it hasn't been used in a while. I'm going to take it back. It has been a barn burner of an episode, including three championship matches and the return of Mr. McMahon, and I got a lot to say about this. Now, before we get to this, you guys know the routine. You guys know the whole shtick. We always like to hear what you guys have to say, so make sure to leave your thoughts on this week's SmackDown down in the comment section below. Make sure you follow myself and the entire OneWrestling.com family on social media. Of course, I'm at OKFabe. Okay you can follow us at OneWrestling, of course, the OneWrestling.com site. Of course, you guys can follow Big Ray, Big Slam Nation, of course, the legendary, the iconic Mr. Bill After at After One Wrestling. Make sure you follow us on the various social media and let us know what you guys thought of SmackDown. As always, subscribe and hit that bell so you get notified every time we make a new video here on One Wrestling. So, a lot to cover on this week's SmackDown Live, a lot of craziness, a lot of chaos, and of course, what better way to start off with craziness and chaos, and of course, with Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens coming out, making his entrance, gets on the mic, and welcomes us to the Kevin Owens show, saying that we'll all... Better get used to saying that because we all saw Shane's cowardly and brutal attack and he points out that he didn't fight back and chose not to because he respects authority and McMahon was a figure of authority who attacked him. Which is why he's now suing everyone. He said he's suing everyone from the board of directors to the McMahons to anyone he knows until SmackDown is no more and until he presents the Kevin Owens show, excuse me, <clears throat> it's the Kevin Owens presents the Kevin Owens show Starring Kevin Owens. I have to make sure I get that right because otherwise I just I it, it, the man's a great talent. I want to make sure I script his name. And of course, the first thing he says that is a, a, as taking over of the Kevin Owens show is to fire Sami Zayn. He says that Byron and Todd Phillips are going to wear the same suit, and he's even getting rid of uh, the fashion files. But of course, this doesn't take long for him to call out Mr. McMahon himself. But instead of that, we get Shane's music that plays, and out of pure pure frustration, Kevin Owens is ready to flip his lid. But it's actually Dolph Ziggler, dressed up as Shane McMahon. Absolutely hilarious. Uh, as they go back and forth, basically saying how, well, he was just trying the entrance out. He's going to throw this in the maybe pile. He apologizes, and Kevin Owens says, oh, well, you know, it's actually Kevin Owens, not uh, Shane McMahon, because Kevin and or Dolph is actually really talented, and Shane isn't. So that rules out Shane right away. But, of course, as Kevin Owens starts to continue his banter about the Kevin Owens show, Daniel Bryan comes out and basically says that he's glad he's having a good time, but the fun and games will be over soon as Mr. McMahon is on his way, and he's not going to like what Vince has to say. Of course, Kevin says that's fine because Vince isn't going to like to say to hear what I have to say either. Great setup for later on the evening, but the first matchup actually takes place between AJ Styles and the perfect 10, Ty Dillinger in an epic match for the United States Championship. Now, the last time we saw these two fight for the U.S. title, it was pretty much a squash. One done and deal really wasn't anything to write home about. I was obviously a much bigger fan of this matchup than it was the last time these two fought. Uh, for the United States Championship. Great counters, great back and forth, and I actually almost got out of my chair as uh, Ty Dillinger was actually able to hit the uh, the tiebreaker after a little back and forth that almost saw a Styles Clash be landed, but unfortunately uh, that did not come to fruition as AJ was able to kick 
got a two. Some outside interference from Baron Corbin presented this whole situation where basically Ty goes for a roll-up and then he goes for the tiebreaker, counters into a Styles Clash, gets encountered into another tiebreaker and actually executes it, but only gets a two. And I swear I thought Ty Dillinger was going to get the win here. But alas, it was not meant to be. AJ comes back pretty quick after the near fall to lock in the calf killer to have Ty Dillinger tap out, thus AJ Styles retaining the WWE United States Championship. The two men go for a handshake out of respect. The crowd chants, of course, Baron Corbin has nothing to do with that as he pulls AJ Styles out, throws him against the barricade against the ring, and then does the same to Ty Dillinger, and then lands a beautiful end of days onto AJ Styles, claiming that the next U.S. Open Challenge will be for Baron Corbin. Not sure how open challenges work when you make them specifically for one person. I want to tweet that phrasing. I'm just... Hey, listen, I'm not saying Baron Corbin shouldn't get the U.S. title shot. I'm just saying you might want to tweak the phrasing on the whole phrase, open challenge, but that's not for me to decide. In any case, we get Jinder Mahal coming out next to basically mock his opponent, Shinsuke Nakamura, for the upcoming Hell in the Cell pay-per-view for the WWE Championship. Now... My critique of this is the fact that we have Jinder Mahal, who is basically making fun of a lot of the faces that Nakamura was making throughout some of his matches. There were awkward and funny faces saying things like, this is what happens, his reaction when someone yells, Godzilla, this is what, you know, where is the bathroom? And he basically, towards the end, says, you know what, you don't want this, Shinsuke. You don't want the title because people will treat you the same way they've treated me, chanting USA while you're trying to speak, telling him his eyes, skin, and hair are different. And he looks like a Pikachu having a seizure. And he tells Nakamura that it's not worth it just walk away and, of course, talks to the people in the native tongue of Punjab. Now, here's the weird thing, and this is something that I'm just, I'm, I, I think that they kind of should have avoided this. I think Jinder and Nakamura have a chance to really make their feud very good. Um, but what I wish they would have done, instead of going the route of making fun of his faces, which I, I guess I understand where they're coming from, they're trying to get Jinder to be a bad guy, which I think he's doing a pretty good job of it as it is. I would personally have gone after Nakamura and his accomplishments in Japan. You were able to be such a, a high-profile wrestler in Japan. You've done all these great things. You were the flagship of that company. You were like the John Cena of Japan. But in WWE, I am a great nation of India and go from there. You know what I mean? I feel like that would have been a more natural progression, especially where we didn't even see Nakamura rebut. We didn't see him at all tonight on SmackDown outside of the funny faces we saw in the Titan Tron. So it was a little disheartening to see them go that that route when you could realistically go a much different route and I feel like get a little bit of a better result, a better reaction, because this feud between Jin, uh, for, between Nakamura and Jinder uh, has really had not a whole lot of substance behind it compared to, let's say, you know, Kevin Owens and Jay McMahon, AJ Styles and Baron Corbin. We're going to talk about the New Day and Usos in a minute. You know, there hasn't been that much... Uh, really substance to their feud, and I feel like something as simple as that uh, would be better than, let's say, making fun of the faces he makes during the matches, but that's just my opinion, folks. I also want to hear what you guys have to say about this as well. Awesome. Sin City Street Fight for the SmackDown Tag Team Titles between the Usos and New Day. These two teams always kill it in the ring. They are always fantastic. Uh, I have nothing but good things to say about this one. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much because the matchup will stand itself to just it just incredible, incredible matchup between both uh, both teams. They seem to always put on almost a better performance every single time. Their match at SummerSlam was fantastic. So much good stuff uh, coming out of this tag team title match uh, between the Usos and the New Day. New Day getting a surprising pinfall victory after the Midnight Hour, winning back the SmackDown tag team titles. Now, I have a theory. I think that, I've said this before, I think Usos and New Day could go on several times, but they need to have a way to wrap up this feud. They've been feuding since June, and I think I know the way to do it. I think these two teams need to fight inside hell in a cell for the tag team titles. I think that's a first as well. The first time we ever see a tag team title hell in the cell match. I could be wrong about that. I feel like I am wrong, but of course you guys can let me know in the comment section below. Speaking of championships, the last title matchup on tonight's SmackDown Live was, of course, between Naomi and Natalya for the SmackDown Women's Championship. I'd say it was a very solid matchup between the two women. Uh, a couple surprising factors, of course, Carmella at ringside with the women's SmackDown, uh, the SmackDown Women Money in the Bank briefcase. What I was kind of a little concerned about was I I would I, th I could have sworn we were going to see a cash-in. I thought for sure this is the night we were going to see a cash-in, uh, but it was not meant to be. And more surprisingly, Natalia retaining the championship via submission, which I'm not saying I didn't want her to lose the title. No, no, au contraire, mon frère. I would want to see Natalia as the longest reigning SmackDown Women's Champion in history. That being said, I was actually surprised. I thought either Natalia was going to lose the championship to Naomi or retain and have Carmella cash in, and none of that happened. 
submission victory with Natalia over Naomi after Naomi uh, botched a crossbody onto Carmella after trying to aim for Natalia. Natalia taking advantage and locking in the sharpshooter to win via submission. Fantastic stuff. Next up, we have the ever charismatic Dolph Ziggler once again trying out entrances. Now, if you guys saw anything from last week's SmackDown where he's trying to showcase how entrances are just like flamboyant and flashy and anyone can do them, it's more or less repeating the same process, except this time he is using Bailey and the Ultimate Warrior, saying that anyone can do that, but no one can step in the ring and do what I do. I have a hunch that I have an idea of where this whole idea is going with, and if, I, if I'm hopefully right... Ooh, it, it, it could be a, a, a good one. It could say, you could say it's um, glorious. I'll just put it that way. Uh, quick tag team matchup between Chad Gable and Shelton Benjamin against the Hype Bros. Uh, Gable and Benjamin able to get a quick vin- win via pinfall with a powerbomb inverted bulldog combination. Uh, Hype Bros look a little frustrated after the matchup. They might see the... Might, might, might see uh, the beginning of the end of the Hype Bros, which I hope is not the case. I think the SmackDown Tag Team division is really starting to fl- uh, flourish now, and I don't want to see it crumble uh, this soon with another split up another tag team. We've already seen so many. I don't want to see it happen again. But finally, we have the moment that everyone is talking about, and that is, of course, Kevin Owens confronted by Mr. McMahon. And this was absolutely perfect if for nothing i mean just vince vince and mr mcmahon whichever character you want to call him mr mcmahon did a fantastic job mcmahon came out and talking about how kevin's description of not fighting back isn't because he didn't fight back it was because shane was beating his ass big bad courageous kevin owens not fighting back he's going to sue everyone instead but he says that he thinks he has the upper hand he wants that power and says well if then if, if you filed a lawsuit mr o, kevin owens then you're going to hear I'm going to immediately call your lawyer, and hopefully you'll be able to hear this when you say, Kevin Owens, you're fired. So go ahead and file your lawsuit. He asked Owens if he has any idea how many lawsuits he's been in and how many he has lost. Not one single one. And for better or for worse, it's in his favor because he's a B, billionaire with a B. And you know what? He, if, if Owens decides to drag this whole thing out, then realistically he's going to have a B next to his name, except not to be for billionaire. It's going to be for bankrupt. So go ahead, sue him. See what happens next. So Owen says, well, Shane puts his hands on me. And Vince says, that's right. And I suspended Shane. Well, not so much for what he did to you, but because he didn't finish the job. So he says, I'm going to reinstate Shane and give him the opportunity to do everything he just said and more because there will be no lawsuit, but there will be a match. Kevin Owens versus Shane McMahon inside Hell in a Cell. Owen's a little taken aback, finally says, you know what, that's fine, that's fine, but you need to promise me that you're not going to get me fired for beating your son Scentless, I need your word, if provoked, I can beat a McMahon Scentless, Vince agrees, and that's when Kevin Owens decides to headbutt Mr. McMahon, causing blood to come out from his forehead, Owens then proceeds to punch him even further, kick him in the gut, even do a super kick and a frog splash, despite numerous agents and referees pleading not to do so, Kevin Owens with a distraught look on his face as a paramedic team with a stretcher, and actually Stephanie McMahon, who was there for the Mae Young Classic, also helps Vince to his feet, stumbling as he grabs his ribs as Kevin Owens looks on shamelessly with an evil look to close out SmackDown this week. SmackDown did it again. They did a fantastic job, I think, of a lot of the, just a lot of the build. And one of the things that I was saying in in my YouTube channel and a couple other things on Twitter is that, uh, you know, SmackDown's pay-per-views aren't uh, monthly anymore. They're kind of a little bit more spaced out now. And with that being said, there's going to be some lulls, but I feel like they were using those lulls to help either wrap up or build up new stories. And I think this was a pivotal moment for a lot of the major angles. Uh, The only one, of course, I was not a huge fan of was the gender Shinsuke one. But aside from that, we see continuation with AJ Styles and Baron Corbin, continuation with uh, the Usos and New Day, continuation with the Women's Championship, and of course, obviously the big one, continuations with Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens. Hell in a Cell is looking fantastic, and I really enjoyed the SmackDown this week. But of course, guys, these are just my thoughts. We always like to hear what you guys have to say. So make sure you leave us your thoughts on this week's SmackDown down in the comment section below. Make sure you follow, again, myself and the entire OneWrestling.com family on social media. All links are in the description, along with heading over to OneWrestling.com. Follow myself at OKFabe. Follow Big Ray, the big slam nation, of course, the legendary, the iconic Mr. Bill After at After One Wrestling. Let us know what you thought of SmackDown this week. Thank you guys again for tuning in for another edition of the SmackDown Rebound. And to quote the legendary, the iconic Mr. Bill After, we will see you at the matches.